I was just checking on our fish visitors, making sure they have everything they need. Lots of oxygen, cool temperatures, just the right pH, and of course, lots of fish food for the hungry predators. So come on inside and I'll take you on an underwater tour of South River. It's a real privilege to get to know the South River fish on a personal level and to care for them. You know, we've been having a fish kill for the past several years in the Shenandoah River, and biologists are still working to find the cause. While our biologists continue their efforts, we wanted to give you a chance to get to know these fish on a personal level and see how interesting and complex they really are. So come on and let's check out a few. Another fish I'd like to show you is right here. This is called the smallmouth bass. Notice this bass has a large mouth. This fish eats crayfish, minnows, and when it catches its prey, it swallows it whole. Another adaptation that's interesting about this fish are the spines on its back. All fish from the sunfish family have these spines and they use them for protection. Another species in the sunfish family is called the red-breast sunfish. It's easy to see where this particular fish got its name. Look at the orange on its stomach. In the springtime, the males will get very brightly colored. Like birds and other animals, fish use colors to attract their mates. When the males find a, a particular nesting spot, they'll use their tails to sweep out the gravel and flash their colors to attract the females. These fish will eat insects, worms, and are real fun to catch. Unfortunately, in the spring of 2005, there was a severe fish kill on the south fork of the Shenandoah River. Both the species that I just showed you were severely affected. It is estimated that 80% of the red-breast sunfish and the smallmouth bass died during these kills. Biologists believe that an unknown stressor during runoff events weakened the fish, and then a naturally occurring bacteria attacked the fish, causing the lesions that you're seeing in the pictures. The fish eventually die from these lesions. We may not know the exact cause of the fish kills, but one thing we do know is sediment can cause huge problems. Eroded soil on banks with no vegetation like this one can wash into the river during rain events, making the river look like a chocolate milkshake. Once the sediment settles, it creates a mud bottom instead of a nice clean habitat for the fish and insects. This makes it difficult for the fish and insects to hunt, breathe, swim, and lay eggs. Take the case of another fish friend, the bluehead chub. The male chub uses small pebbles to build a large circular nest. The nest can be as large as three feet in diameter and almost a foot tall. After the nests are constructed, the female chub will lay her eggs in the pile of rocks. Fish eggs need plenty of oxygen and fresh water, just like the parents. If too much sediment settles in the chub's nest, the eggs will be smothered and eventually will die. Sediment is obviously a huge problem for our fish, but there is an easy solution and you can help. By letting trees and other shrubs grow up along the river, we can have a cleaner and healthier environment for everyone to enjoy. Scientists call these streamside buffers. To create a buffer of your own, all you have to do is plant trees or fence livestock out and a natural buffer will come up on its own. By doing this one simple act, we'll have a cleaner and healthier watershed. I just can't resist showing you one more of our native fish species. This fish is called the northern hog sucker. It lives in fast moving current with lots of oxygen. Notice how streamlined the body is. The body shape helps this fish stay in the fast moving current. It also has large pectoral fins to keep it on the bottom. Another interesting adaptation about this fish is the mouth. Look how the mouth is situated on the bottom of the head. It uses this mouth like a vacuum cleaner to suck up macroinvertebrates on the bottom of the stream. It's also a pretty good kisser. This bend in the river looks like great habitat for the northern hog sucker. There is usually enough oxygen here when the water runs over the rocks and creates bubbles. Unfortunately, when we use excess fertilizer on our lawns and on our farms, rain can wash the fertilizer off into the river. The nutrients in the fertilizer cause excess algal growth and plant growth, like you're seeing here. The plants can actually decrease the oxygen in the water. That can make it hard for the fish and the aquatic insects to breathe. The good news is that the same stream buffers that protected us against the sediment can also protect us against the fertilizer. Well, thanks again for stopping by. Have a seat on a stump, grab a tackle box, 
and see how many fish you can identify in the tank. And don't forget to go next door. You won't believe how many insects live in a healthy stream. Have a good one.